Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Dark and good afternoon. Welcome to Winner Home on Afternoon Express, brought to you by Private Property. My name is Danilo Acquisto, and it's the weekend. A new week means a new design adventure for our three design duos as they transform three cluster homes at the spectacular Eye of Africa estate in Johannesburg from white box spaces into lavish homes, one of which you could win. Hence the name of our show. And can I just say what an exciting journey it's been so far? What was really cool was that last week's bathroom reveal was trending at number one on Twitter for hours after the show and it's wonderful to see how much you're enjoying watching the homes come to life and also giving your support to your favorite design duos so please keep that love coming on social media platforms using the hashtag win a home now before you reveal which room our design contestants will be tackling next let's give you a quick recap welcome to the show Last time on Winner Home, the design duos pulled off an amazing feat by designing and decorating both bathrooms in their homes. Although Team House and Leisure were confident in their design choices, We're quite positive that all will go well. The judges questioned the open plan layout of their ensuite. Gives a new meaning to going to the bathroom behind the bush. Oh. In Team VC's bathroom, the judges cozied up and waxed lyrical about their modern, luxurious design. But it was Team Habitat's cleverly designed bathrooms that won the judges over and won them the challenge plus 3,000 Rand added to their budget. We've won. It was... Are like, you putting a Steve Harvey on us? Our time is coming no, when we jealous. will win. No, I'm not jealous. Yeah. Uh, the aim is the bigger price, not uh, 3,000 extra water. Right, so let's move on to the next challenge. Team Habitat's win has certainly changed the dynamic of the competition and none of the design duos will be getting too comfortable with their new design task. Oh, going forward into the next challenge, <laughs> I say what doesn't kill you. <laughs> Honey, make sure it makes you stronger. Contestants, it's good to see you again. Is it safe to say that you're all looking a little washed up off your previous challenge? I hope you've learned some valuable lessons because the next room is going to require a mastery of your interior design skills. It's a room in which the owner will spend almost a third of their lives. This room needs to be comfortable, relaxing and invite only the sweetest of dreams. You'll be decorating and designing the master bedroom. Contestants, you have 10 days to complete this challenge. Go forth and design. And remember, don't let those bed bugs bite. I'm not quite sure how I'm feeling about the master bedroom because I'm still recovering from the bathrooms. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I think the bathrooms took everything out of us. It's a bedroom, so we know how to do that. <laughs> We've done a bedroom before. Uh -huh. But it has to be a master bedroom, so it has to be extra luxurious. We're super excited. Yes. Yeah, after winning the bathroom challenge. It's the only natural progression to take it to the master bedroom. Yeah. Yes. The lion's <laughs> den. That's right. <laughs> In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. But these design duos might not get a wink of sleep as they hit the ground running to plan the most important bedroom in the house. At the top of Team VC's to-do list for the master bedroom is getting advice from their mentor. We're meeting with Anna Marie mm -hmm. uh, for our mentor meeting mm -hmm. and Anna Marie has quite a few great ideas for us. Uh, Welcome Anna Marie. <laughs> what do you think? Ah, oh, the lights freak me out like every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're thinking of having a four poster bed in here. I'm glad. With two pedestals, a painting, a uh, wallpaper that side, and nice... Wallpaper? Yeah, nice chase something. It's just a thought. No, 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 no. I didn't know about the wallpaper, but I like wallpaper. <laughs> so I don't mind. So the judges' criticism always criticizes us on the room not balancing. Yes. So we decided to work on a pie chart to break the room so that we okay. see that each and every space relates to another. Mm -hmm. And underneath that four poster bed, we wanted to have this absolutely stunning carpet. carpet. 
So we're gonna have the delicious oh, pasta I love it. We want to make a beautiful statement with the curtains, a big bold one. So we're thinking of a very heavy fabric. Kilometers, eh? Kilometers. Not skimpy little things on the side. <laughs> Kilometers, okay? A beautiful velvet fabric. Nice. Um, and we want to go with maybe a bold color because our paint in this room, which is going to be basically a continuation of what is in the bar. Great, great. Now show me your final color. Let's go colors hunting. Nitty bluey, it's not existing. So look at this. It's wonderful. What is this color called? It's called honey. Let me just tell you something. Those other guys have killed pink and green. So if you get pink or green, I don't think I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> but you can choose which one you want of these. No, choose between these two. Mm. Take your time and let me know before the end of the day. Perfect. Because we have to go and order it. OK, guys, let's just walk out. Let's sneak out, because the <laughs> others make such a show when they leave. Let's just calmly go. You can't just decide, OK, we're going to have like a, a brown bed or maybe a brown floor without an explanation. Everything of ours needs, needs to work together. So that's what we are learning from her. And it's actually an amazing journey. Mm -hmm. We at Balgatex, we can't wait to tell our manager. Everyone! Because <laughs> the last time we saw her, it was literally wang, wang, wang. It's so hard, it's so hard. We're not winning. Yeah, so now we're winning one. And we're ready to pick our floors for the master bedroom. So for the master bedroom, I'm thinking carpets. I want laminate flooring. I don't know who's going to take out that polish. Are you? <laughs> no. Are you going to take out the vacuum cleaner? Hmm. Miss Fifty's housewife. <laughs> I might take out both. <laughs> Your laminate and the carpet. <laughs> Have you already decided? Oh. We're ready for a man to tell us how to decide, basically. Hi, yes. guys. How Hi. did it go? What Amanda. happened with the bathroom challenge? We won! We won. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> we won. You deserve it. I'm so sure. proud of you. You did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it came off guard. Sure. Like, we really didn't expect it. It was like, sure. No, we Get thought... up and get your ass down. <laughs> and we're like, ah! Yeah, it yeah. was really nice to win. What do you think the winning formula was? In your words, I'd definitely say less objet. Yeah, we kept it more simple. Like clean lines. Yeah, but we still played with... We still kept that bold Absolutely. element. Absolutely. There's a zebra crossing. We <laughs> executed that. Yeah. But, you know, we didn't over-embellish afterwards. Yeah. What ideas do you have for the master bedroom? Well, the master bedroom is based around the lion's den. So yes. we've gone for quite neutral tones. Like we're going to do an all-white story yes. with different yes. shades of white. Yes. We're leaving the different shades of green. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> yes, with gold. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so today we're looking at carpets and flooring for the master bedroom. Yes. And what are your feelings or what does the bear think? So far, I thought we mix the hard with the soft. <laughs> so it's like mixing the laminate flooring with the carpet. Bradley wants to keep it consistent. Yeah, I wanted to keep it. I hate homes that every room is a different floor. <laughs> <laughs> I need, it's like a dance floor. You got the hip hop, then you got the jam. <laughs> I would agree with Bradley wanting to maintain consistency. Okay. I don't think that that would mix with carpet. So we should just stick to the laminate. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Because with the laminate, we had two options okay. that we were thinking of mixing together. So we're thinking of going for the Portland basswood and the Portland lance wood. Because that's what we use for the leopard library. And that's it's right. worked quite well. Are we going for another win? Ah, <laughs> once you win, you can't wind back the clock. No, so we, we're going forward. No, we've got that winning streak. Stronger, <laughs> harder. <laughs> yeah. The other Jews must be scared <laughs> to even try and take it off our heads. <laughs> Team House and Leisure want to reclaim that crown and turn to their mentor for guidance. We're looking forward to meeting up with Tian because we actually really need advice this time around. And he's been very happy with our past ideas, but I feel like this time around we really, really need his advice. Tian, so we have got Mido Yellow running from the master bedroom to the bathroom. And the judges unfortunately didn't like it. How do you think we should break that up? Well, first of all, I don't agree with the judges because I think that colour is beautiful. But considering that maybe it's too much of a pale colour throughout the whole room, um, you can still look at a soft tone, 
But what about like a soft nude or a blush or a pale pink that kind of has that articulation but offering some interest in the room so it's not one tone throughout the whole space. Also we're critiqued for over accessorizing our bathrooms so what would be like the best advice in terms of like accessorizing the main bedroom? I think the choices that you guys make are considered and they're beautiful but maybe instead of volume consider scale rather so less stuff but bigger impactful stuff. You usually have a great selection of art, so I wouldn't worry about that too much, but I think it's the smallest stuff, the vases, the scatter cushions, the throws, maybe get more impactful stuff and more graphic stuff um, for the room. Keep it simple, essentially. Since our dresser is similar to the, my bedside table, we're thinking of breaking the symmetry by painting the top of the dresser in a different color, which is a charcoal gray. What's your advice on that? So considering that the room is relatively pale, I think you need to introduce maybe a bolt pattern. Um, you've got an interesting mix of metals in the bathroom. I saw there was a little bit of rose gold and silver. So maybe even a, a mixed metal kind of play um, could be cool. There's a few things that you guys can't compromise on when it comes to a master bedroom. Um, one is good linen. The, splurge your budget there and buy the base that you can afford. Um, B, consider storage on either side of the bed and offer the homeowner as many storage solutions as you can cram into that space. I can see that you're tired, so stock up on some great coffee and it's looking great, so good luck. Thank you, Tian. <laughs> Well, it seems all the duos received sound advice from their mentors and now have to refine their vision for the master bedroom. So after the break, our design duos turn their design ideas into reality. Grundig, for a good reason. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Express yourself. Welcome back to Hashtag Winner Home on Afternoon Express. And I'm loving reading through all the tweets that are coming, streaming in for the show. Keep them coming. Now, our design duos are decorating the master bedroom. And we're better to get some design inspiration than at two of the country's biggest and most popular home and decor design showcases, Decorex Joburg and 100% Design South Africa. We're so excited to be at Decorex. Yeah, 100% Design, very excited. It's where we see South Africa's best designers, people that think about Africa and like they start doing things for design, for the love of design. That's where I want to be. Welcome designers. It's so exciting to have you at our Plascon stand today, where we featuring our beautiful forecast themes for 2018. Do you have any idea how trends even come about? Well, data is collected from any event that contributes to our ever-changing lives. So scientific technology, the arts movements, and all of this eventually becomes part of what is trending. I love our first theme, Exotic Euphoria, because I'm a lover of green. I love the fact that there is a blur between the artificial and the natural. Also, the phosphorescent colors that we've introduced into this palette are really exciting. Okay, tell me, how do you come up with your color story names like Exotic Euphoria? It's jungle inspired. So I think if you look at the jungle and you look at the amazing vegetation, it's quite exotic. And what better person to ask this question, Brad? Because having looked at your work, you use a lot of color and you, you layer all your effects. And I think even your outfit is the epitome of the theme exotic euphoria. You look like a beautiful exotic snake today. Slipping and sliding. <laughs> I never saw myself as a snake. But you were wearing it. Yes. I mean. More like Eve. Yes. Being <laughs> persuaded by the snake. You're looking for Adam. <laughs> Guys, the energy of this stand is much softer, much calmer. 
the palette is called soft composition. And here it's an edited space. So the design theme is all about no clutter. The retro accents give it a really modern punchy feel and yet the muted colors make it really inviting and warm. There's the color focus and we didn't even know that they do a color focus and it's very exciting to see that there's a neutral of the year that Temple enjoyed. The neutral of the year is Amadeus, which was quite interesting because Claire got to give us an insight into like what's like the selection process of the like selecting that color and putting together like the color focus as well. High Glow really is one of my favorites because talking to all of you who design this, it's all about breaking the rules. It's about being adventurous. It's about pushing the envelope. And I love the quirky mix and use of color here. High Glow is about expression, whether you're young or old. Craft Spirit takes inspiration from global cultures. So with the internet and infinite information available, it's a mix of items from your travels, picking up colors from Instagram, and using it all in a beautiful, eclectic, layered mix. So now you've been privy to our four beautiful palettes of 32 colors. I hope you're suitably inspired. She's already on 2018. That's our kind of girl. So ahead of the game. Yeah, so we're one step ahead yes. in terms of choosing colors. Hi guys, welcome to 100% Design South Africa and welcome to the Caesarstone concept stand. This is a furniture collaboration that we took on. Uh, just like we gave you guys an open brief to use Caesar Stone anywhere you like in the home, that's what we did here. We approached three very influential and forward-thinking designers and asked them to take Caesar Stone and create something beautiful, commercial, and just generally a really eye-catching product. I've been following Dr. and Mrs. for a while and it was interesting to actually finally see the people behind the brand and seeing you go, it was, it was a really nice experience. Um, yeah, we were approached by Caesar Stone to um, create furniture using their material. It was the first time we used Caesar Stone or stone as, as, as a material and uh, we realized it's a heavy material, it's a durable material, it's got a great sort of surface finish that, and we tried to highlight that in our, in our furniture. Um, we made a dining room table, a coffee table and some lights. And the lights, what we try to do is use different materials together. We used uh, glass um, in conjunction with like this heavy stone. And the idea was to show yeah, the fragility of the glass with the solidness of the stone. And then also this kind of hovering light above this solid structure. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what's, what we came up with. I don't know if you guys got any questions about the specific pieces. Yeah, so the question is, how do you guys uh, get inspired as designers, like continue to be inspired as designers? We're constantly creating stuff, and I think that, that the creating part is what makes us happy. And then also trying to always do something unique um, that's not been done before, either be it aesthetically, be it functionally, be it like a new material, that, that kind of stuff keeps us inspired. With your fluent use of steel, how did you find the shift in material? Yeah, I mean, steel comes naturally to us. You know, we've been using it for like more than 10 years. This was a bit different. Um, you know, you can't just weld it up and grind it and so on. It's a heavier material. Using new materials create new things, you know, and, and that's, that's the exciting part of it. Also exciting was the chance for the design duos to meet their fans. Oh, the fans, the fans, we love them. <laughs> Without them, we are nothing. It's good to feel appreciated for your work. Mm. Mm. I just hope they love our design. <laughs> The House and Leisure team, I had an absolutely groupy moment there as when you see people on TV and real life, it's an absolutely phenomenal feeling. So it's great. What you see on the TV is what you get in person. They are fabulous, very vibey, absolute energy. So yeah, that is very great. Love meeting the design duos here today. I'm a big fan of the show, so seeing them in real life and interacting was really inspirational and just really fun. Listen, who's your favorite design duo so far? Ah, uh, VC, VC, VC. I'm like Team Umpo all the way. <laughs> is it because of what he looks like or is it because of his design? It's because of his design, but then what, doesn't, what he looks like isn't so bad at all. Ladies love Umpo. Hmm? Tall, duck, and what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Give them a look. Give them a, hook, a look. 
Come on, boy. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> The design duos are enjoying their taste of fame, but really it's you who could be living the good life at the Eye of Africa estate as our grand prize winner, with your choice of one of the three homes being designed by our duos. Now, besides top-notch security, one of the other perks of being a resident in the lifestyle estate is easy access to great leisure activities. There are play areas for kids, walking and biking trails, and a communal swimming pool. But there's one activity that's hard to miss because it's the signature of this exquisite village-like estate. The Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate offers residents the freedom to go from doorstep to tee off within a few meters. Something the estate's director of golf knows all too well. Hi, and honestly, driving around this golf course is so beautiful. What has been your golf journey and getting yourself to this point? It was my love for golf. That, that made me change, uh, you know, do a career change back in 1992. I actually accepted a job at, in the uh, pro shop at Ranfontein, but knew that I had some catching up to do and I, and I made it my business to, to learn everything about the entire business. Uh, and I've been very fortunate. I mean, my, the first golf course uh, actual build that I was involved in was in Graceland in Secunda. Coming to IF Africa was also a dream for me. I live on the estate, I work on the estate, I don't have to go anywhere. Very blessed. And what makes this golf course itself so unique? Firstly, it's a, it's a Greg Norman design, signature design, and uh, the only of its kind in South Africa. Uh, what makes it a little bit unique as well is where you normally have nine holes and you go back to the clubhouse and you have your halfway house. This you play out to the furthest point on the golf course, have your halfway there and then you play back to the clubhouse again. Uh, the nice thing about this golf course, it's, it's very challenging. It challenges every shot, but it's also player friendly. Now listen, every golfer is looking for something unique about the golf courses that they play on. I mean, what are some of your personal favorite spots on this course? Once you start getting to number six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, that stretch is beautiful because it's a little bit higher up uh, and you see just everywhere around you. One lucky viewer gets to win a home on this incredible estate. What happens if they don't play golf or would like to start? We have a fully stocked pro shop. We have uh, teaching professionals. We have a driving range, chip and butt course. All the facilities are there. If they want to get into it, we're here to help them and they can, we can certainly teach them to play golf. Well, to be honest, I'm one of those people, I've played maybe like two rounds of golf in my life. Do you think you've got somebody who can help me? What you need to do right now is, is meet Ryan Kimber. He's uh, one of our teaching professionals and he can show you the ropes. He's a, he's a very likable young man and uh, he certainly will get some very, very good tips from him. Let's go. Okay. Ryan, how's it? How's it going, man? Very good. Nice to good, see you. Man. Yeah. Listen, I, I honestly find golf one of the most intimidating sports. And why do you think it is like that? And how do we break those boundaries down? Uh, I think it's just uh, it's quite a hard sport to, to 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 do to hit the small ball with a club that's only this size, which is not the easiest thing. And people tend to think too much into it. The swing, everyone gets technical, so it just becomes a a mind game, really. What is the appeal of golf, and why did you choose to play the game? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's a fun sport. It's, you can play with a lot of guys at one time, which is quite nice. So the competition's there. But it's, it's nice to just get out outdoors for a bit on a weekend, spend some time with uh, friends, mates, have some beers afterwards. It's just generally quite a fun day out. Where do we start? With the swing, right? Uh, yes. Let's, let's have a practice swing there. Let's see what you got. Woo! The nerves! Can we go for the ball? Yes, take it away. Mama, I made it! Now this better, this better work out. This is for TV. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Awkward. I think you can see it. <laughs> can you set up again there? Yeah. See, it's got quite a strong grip there. You want to actually just... Loosen move. it. Uh, this thumb at the back there, you want to put down the shaft, yes, okay. Okay. This thumb can actually go a little bit slightly over there. So that's what we call a neutral grip. It should keep everything a lot uh, tighter. It should be a bit better. You can give it another swing there and see how it feels. There we go. Oh, my word. <laughs> hey, that wasn't too bad. Hey, hey? good shot. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. All right, let's keep going. The PAR 72 Championship course spans over 6,895 meters 
and the design endeavoured to integrate the course seamlessly with its stunning natural surrounds. Right, so that was fun so far. I didn't come in on par at all. I'll come to more lessons, don't worry. I'll tell you what, if I sink this putt, you buy me pizza. If I miss this putt, I'll buy you pizza. Deal. Let's do it. Oh, no! <laughs> Hey, you hit the line right. <laughs> I'll buy pizza, I'll buy pizza. Might as well accept defeat with a treat at the Estates restaurant. There it is. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, bud. So, Ryan, a deal's a deal. The pizza's yours. Thanks for the lessons today. I'll come for more. <laughs> Definitely need them. And if you're our grand prize winner, this could be your brand new hobby. You're in for a treat. Tuck in. If you want to make the Eye of Africa estate your new home, then you've got to enter our Winner Home Grand Prize competition. Simply visit privateproperty.co.za, click on the Winner Home logo and enter the competition by voting for your favorite design duo. You could win your choice of one of the three homes decorated on our show, complete with luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, as well as premier home appliances by Grindig. This fantastic once-in-a-lifetime prize is worth over three million rand. So don't just sit there watching me now, get your entry in immediately. Still to come on the show, however, I could be announcing your name as the winner of our bi-weekly competition, plus our design duos get going with some creative collaborations. Partnership with Winner Home. The best stone is Caesar Stone. This is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now to add bespoke character to their master bedrooms, the design duos can collaborate with creatives or artisans from various different spheres. Team House and Leisure have sought the expertise of a man who knows all about heavy metal. Joburg-based furniture designer and fabricator Joe Payne is renowned for his inventive, original and practical products. We think his style is very simple, minimal and contemporary and I think it complements our style. We've decided to get the self-help side table because we all need help. <laughs> Yay, our self-help side table is ready. Thank you so much, Joe. Are you happy? Yes. Now, final touch, we just need to add our scissor stone and then we're good to go. I think it look great. Thank you so much, Joe. But why is it called a self-help side table? Basically, it came from a desire and a need for uh, a side table to hide all the odds and ends that are quite embarrassing, such as your self-help books. That's cool. I think it's much more different from having like a traditional drawer. It's going to look great with your black CSO top. I think it's going to look amazing. Joe, we noticed these trays here. Is it possible to like recycle them into mirrors? Oh, these are quite cool. And I'd love to have like the same one on my side of the bed and have a scissor stone in it so that it complements that. Using scissor stone on the tray as well as the table will, will, will be wonderful because it'll create a, almost like a family of products. Joe, so we're thinking of having mirrors here as well. Do you have any other finishes for mirrors? Yes, yeah, absolutely. There are three main ones. That's the clear, the grey and the bronze. And are they the same price? They are semi-affordable, yes, depending on your finish on the edge. So you can either aris it, which is cheap, you can polish it, which just gets a little bit more expensive. And the one thing like, I want to find out is, do you think it'll look like Look like it'll look proper if we mix like the different colors of mirrors around. It'll add some variation. Um, you're already using a variation in your color, from, as in your white and your black. I think you can use the gray and the bronze quite effectively. The mixture of up is up to you guys there. Oh yeah, because that's something like I've never seen been done. Neither have I really, but I think it's your responsibility to push the boundaries just a little bit and wish you complete luck with that. Thank you so much, Joe, and for helping us from the beginning till now. Only a pleasure. Yes. It's been fun. So, for, so which mirrors do you think you should use? I want the bronze. I want the grey. Then why did you ask me? Because <laughs> I need to have all of them. <laughs> yes. 
be really loving like the kind of products he offers. And he accommodates our time pressure. He's just always happy. He's like, take your time. <laughs> <laughs> which, which nobody ever like has time for because it's all like all our collaborators are always pulling out. But then with him, he's always consistent. Mirror, mirror on the table. Who's gonna win the bedroom challenge? Team house and leisure. We finally get to get around mirror. Team heavy Ted. Be warned, we're coming back for our crown. That's yeah, gonna work. Yes! <laughs> for their creative collaboration, Team VCR having custom bedside tables made by furniture designer Paul Vacchia. All right, so guys, I am so happy that you guys were inspired by the Tandeka server. Based on our initial drawings, I have like a 3D that we can run through um, with some materials that I applied. So this is basically the idea that we had. Um, it's a bit longer, which I love. I love the fact that you have like a nice long bedside table. I have a range of timbers that I was thinking and I was actually thinking that we should use the Kiat, especially because we use it with the Tandika and it works so incredibly well. And I love how it picks up on the colors of the Caesar stone that you guys chose. And I think we have all our colors in here, hey? Yeah. So look at the white, the Kiat, and also the top of exactly, the stone. Exactly, exactly. So are you guys going to, uh, are we going to use the same patterns as the Tandika or are we going to do something different? So I quite like this pattern, mm -hmm. um, but I think I'd want it maybe mirrored and slightly longer lengthened just so that it actually draws the eye and your attention towards this big bed that we have. We have a big four poster bed in the center of these two pedestals. Um, so I think that would work. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's an interesting play on form. And we also want it maybe to be a little bit more flush because I see here it's slightly raised. Yes, yes. So maybe we should have it flush. I'm not sure no, how to do um, Because uh, of the types of timbers that we're working with and the thicknesses, we could like run into technical problems. So I, we will have a relief um, um, effect. I just don't know how much. I like the fact that it's, it, it's, it's not flushed in because of uh, I want to have those different patterns. Like I want you to, maybe when you're looking at the, the product itself, like maybe try and fill it and touch yeah. it so that you feel the different bumps and also to break away from the wide. Yeah. So these cutouts, I see in the Tandeka that um, mm -hmm. they're empty and I don't know if you want to have in your beds at tables <laughs> something you can see through. <laughs> So I think maybe, what do you think? Should we cover this up maybe? Yeah, I definitely think so. You know, in your bedside table, you keep like private things and my bedside table looks like something exploded in it. So I think it would be much better to have them closed off and we can use the Kiat as a relief and do the same kind of relief um, idea that we're using for the main design and we can use that here. So I think it's going to look great like that. I love the idea. We love okay, the idea. Okay, so perfect. perfect. We want to leave the stones with you yes. so that you can work your magic. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to try and work my magic and you'll have them soon. I can't wait. The Urban Natives aesthetic is very similar to us in that they mm -hmm. also take from the African culture. And so with that, what we hope to achieve is that there's a full-on blend of our love for African things and Paul's take on the African aesthetic mm -hmm. and it all just blends together to make a contemporary yet African piece. Team Habitat's master bedroom needs to roar with luxury, so they've got reams of fabric to turn into bedding and curtains. Coco, hello, this is How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Sure, so we finally brought all the fabrics. Yes. Yeah, so this is Mas Bongile. She's going to be sewing for us our amazing bedding and curtains for the master bedroom. Yeah, Spongile is our power girl, power woman, yeah. wonder woman, wow woman. So this fabric over here, yeah. we're going to be using for a re upholstery. Yeah. yeah, we're going to cover the chairs. Okay. Yeah, okay. in that. Okay. And then this is for the bed. Like we're growing very days of our lives. Mm. Mm. So do you want them to fall right off that bed? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. gonna fit nicely. And then this, we're gonna do the scatter cushions. Okay. Like you know the big ones that go right up against? Yeah. Yes. We're gonna yes, do I two know. of these. I know. Okay, yeah. it's yeah. nice. With the lions for our lion's den okay. bedroom. Yeah. Because yeah. right. we're working on the master bedroom now. Wow. So we want it to be very elegant, like, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> when they walk in the mouth, go, yeah. Do you like it? Too much. <laughs> so this we want to use for the curtains. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, it's a nice material. Nice, nice. choice. Nice I'm choice. glad. I hope oh. the judges like it. Yeah. <laughs> so we got this one as well. We just sure. fell in love with it. I mean, yeah, we weren't sure what to do with it. 
Yeah. So, do you have any suggestions, like what we could make this into? Yo, it's a nice material. I think we can, you can just throw it over after the bed, the bed and then you throw it there. Like a it's a magic throw color. at the bottom of the bed. Uh, yes, yes, it's a uh, nice color. It's matching nice. It's perfect. And do you think we're going to have enough time to finish this order? Yes, darling. Yes. Okay. Nice time. And it's a, it's a nice thing to do. I'm very excited to make it for you. I think you're going to make wonders there. Yes, oh, yes. that's what we like to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, working with them is very nice and funny and exciting. And it's challenging to work with them because they are still young. They are doing great things. Look at me. I'm working with them. They all, always call me when they need something. Sure. So, so we gotta work, and y'all gotta get out of here. Yes. Yes, get you the reveal. <laughs> <laughs> From luxury in the bedroom to luxury in the bathroom, it's time to announce the winner of our latest bi-weekly prize giveaway, the Grower's Smart Control Shower System worth over 11,000 Rand. Could it be you? Congratulations to Limani Masekela from Randberg on winning this fantastic prize. You voted for Team House and Leisure as your favorite design duo and by doing so won this amazing shower. So enjoy your prize. Now our next bi-weekly prize is exactly what everyone needs in their master bedroom. A Sealy Posturepedic mattress and base set providing you with healthy sleep and a healthy life. So to get in the running to this prize, simply enter the grand prize competition by voting for your favorite design duo at privateproperty.co.za. Now speaking of private property, still to come we unpack one of the biggest issues in real estate, how to be a good landlord in our private property advice segment. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private Property, a home for everyone. Welcome back to the trendy Winner Home on Afternoon Express, only on SABC3. Now, Private Property has teamed up with Afternoon Express to provide you with advice on the different aspects of property and estates. Now, if you are a landlord, perhaps, or an investor who wants to invest in property and particularly to rent out that property, today's segment will be of great interest to you. We have Michelle Dickens, Managing Director of TPN Credit Bureau, in studio to give us the lowdown on letting property in an estate. Welcome to our loft. Good afternoon, Dan. So, Michelle, let's talk about what your company does because numbers seem to be the most important thing when it comes to looking at buying. So, what TPN does is we are a credit bureau and we collect uh, rental data on tenants around South Africa. And the idea is to understand where people rent, um, how much they rent for, and most importantly, how they're paying their rent um, mm. on a monthly basis. Coupled with that rental data, we overlay the deeds data, so we've got a market value for the property, we've got a rental value for the property, and we can then determine the gross yield mm -hmm. on a per property basis. So if I rub the genie's lamp, I can get all this information out, which will help me make a wise decision when it comes to buying to let. So what is your data showing? Where are people buying? Where are people renting? Where should we buy? And where should we rent? So there's different um, things that a, a landlord or an investor is going to look for. He's either going to look for capital appreciation or he's going to look for yield appreciation. Um, and the yield appreciation takes into account um, data such as, or factors such as my delinquency ratios, my vacancy ratios, um, and how much rent I'm actually able to achieve. We look at that and we say, well, what are the different areas performing? I can tell you down in the Western Cape, it's one of our best performing areas in terms of rent collection. Mm. So our tenants pay incredibly uh, well down in the Western Cape. But as we know, property is at a premium. And so our yields are not nearly as high in the Western okay. Cape as they are in, say, Johannesburg. Johannesburg um, and Schwane and Ekuleni, I get my best gross yields. But unfortunately, my tenants are a little bit more challenging to collect mm. rent from. And so I, um, I might have a little bit more of a delinquency uh, rate. Okay. You mentioned delinquency. Sorry to interrupt you there. But a delinquency itself, is that a, basically a tenant who doesn't pay on time or doesn't pay at all? Correct. So we look at the data as a good standing tenant, as a tenant who's paid on time, paid late, um, either in the grace or, or later in the month. But by the end of the month, he's paid up. Our delinquencies then are tenants who are either partially paid or not paid. Mm, um, we don't want those. No, we don't. Yeah. And nationally, we have about 6% of tenants who are on the delinquency um, Which is quite a lot. Which is quite a lot. 
Or you could go to below 3,000 rand rentals and there your tenants are 13% in the did not pay category. Pay your rent, people, pay it. Otherwise, we obviously the landlords, the guys who are making these investments don't get to make their money back. What about estates? I mean, where are estates on, on your map at the moment? Are estates a good place to invest? So estates are a fantastic place to rent in terms of location, location, location. Yeah. Typically what you're buying into there is a premium. Um, you're buying into a lifestyle estate. And a buy to rent, even a buy to invest, is not a short-term decision. It's a long-term um, okay. decision. And so over a 10 or 15 or 20 year period, one expects there to be a change in the cycle and for capital appreciation to start delivering in, in our estate market. Okay, so estates are a good place to start looking into. Um, but in terms of the rules and responsibilities, you're kind of uh, liable as the owner of the property if your tenant starts to behave um, you know terribly on the estate starts to play loud music you're quite responsible as the owner so first of all how do we go about choosing the right tenants to put into an estate house that we're renting out so tenant selection is one of your key critical areas in terms of replacements what you want to look at there is their previous rental experience how they've paid their rent their previous credit uh, behavior um, judgments can we ask for that defaults. information uh, absolutely from them. Okay. we need the consent of the tenant so effectively what the investor or the agent on their behalf does ask for consent and then perform the relevant um, credit checks to ensure that the tenant that we're placing has the right history and therefore um, is, is going to be a good tenant going forward. So one of the key elements um, of your lease is signing a lease agreement at the beginning of the lease um, and making the rules of the lease, the homeowner's rules, materially part of that lease agreement. So annexing it to the actual lease agreement. Okay. That's important because if your tenant um, is um, non-compliant in terms of those, those rules, the investor can then pass a fine onto the tenant in terms of any fines that he might have received. Mm -hmm. um, if the tenant is breaching the rules in such a way that it's a material breach of the lease agreement, the landlord can then start the process um, of evicting the tenant. And it's the same process in terms of um, whether the material breach is um, non-compliance of uh, rules mm -hmm. versus non-payment. The challenge with the a lease agreement is it can be either verbal or written. Mm. So simply because you've got a verbal re, uh, uh, rental agreement or lease agreement, you're not going to attach rules to a verbal lease agreement. Yeah. Um, but the Rental Housing Act um, has got some amendments at play. Um, potentially, that means that the lease will have to be in writing. Yeah. And it's a good idea then to annex those uh, body corporate rules or homeowners rules as part of that lease agreement. Stunning. So there you guys have it. Uh, renting out a property on an estate can be a very good investment. But as uh, with most rental investments, Conducting research beforehand and screening your tenant thoroughly is absolutely needed. So don't forget to enter the Winner Home Grand Prize competition on private property and stand a chance to win a multi-million rand home on the Eye of Africa estate. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za and answer that very simple question and then vote for your favorite design duo. After the break on the show today, I check in to see how the master bedrooms are progressing at the halfway mark. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. You're back with us on Winner Home on Afternoon Express exclusively on SABC3. Now, as the master bedroom design process continues, we naturally get a little curious to see what that end result might look like. So yours truly did a little detective work for you. Creating a space full of the sophistication of the savannah, Team Habitat's master bedroom incorporates modern elements of design with a taste for the wild. Team Habitat with the eccentric design style have decided to go with a lion's den theme for their master bedroom. Let's see how it's doing at halfway. Brad and a beer, Team Habitat! Oh, is it just you guys? Where are they? Sorry, Janela, but we were not in a position to host visitors. Not yet. Not yet, not by a long shot. Well, they're not here at the halfway mark, which isn't great because I wanted them to describe what's going on. Uh, but I'll give you a sneak peek in the meantime anyway, from what I can see. Uh, the Caesar Stone pillars have been put in, which are looking really cool. Um, and the Game of Thrones themed wallpaper has been installed here, which I think is, is quite busy, but it's looking nice. Paint is going on. So let's hope Team Habitat are continuing their shopping spree to bring you that eccentric style for that master bedroom.
For Team House and Leisure, the first big task that needed completing was installing their carpet to add more softness to the space. It is the very same carpet we have in our spare bedroom. The idea is to keep the same, like the two rooms the same since the spare bedroom is the dressing room for the main. What's special about our carpet is that it actually has got under felt and when you step on it, it literally just falls like luxury. In Team VC's master bedroom, work has progressed really well and Mpo is already hanging up the curtains so he and Leseko can assess the room. We're putting up the curtains because we want to see the height. It, it can mess us up. If we, we don't, don't want do long that. curtains. Yeah, we don't want the house and leisure situation. So we just want the curtains to look perfect. Danilo, this is our master bedroom as it stands right now. We love our bed, it's beautiful, it's exactly what we wanted. Yeah. However, we feel like the wallpaper and the curtains are not going to work considering all the other stuff that needs to come in here. It's going to be too busy, but it's actually nice. So we're not sure if we're going to keep it or take it out. So I don't know if maybe you can give us your suggestion. You're thinking of maybe we can try and break it out with picture frames. Well, I'm not the expert or anything, but I'll take a look. So what do you think? You see, the black one's quite nice with the frame because it really accentuates the grey on the wall and it, it pops, it stands out. But I'm not too sure about the white one, it kind of blends into nothingness. But that kind of might be what you guys are looking for. You want it to just sort of make the whole wall slightly more subtle. Cool, stunning. Let's blend it. And then what happens with the bed? Because that's also going to contribute to, I'm sure, more colour. So we're going to have white linen and we're going to have like a green throne and two orange cushions. So it's either we take the wallpaper out or the curtains, and we can't take the curtains out. We love the curtains, we love, the we love the wallpaper. Yeah. Right, so as I only know how to do in puns, I'm going to leave you to it, all right? Good luck to both of you. Thank you so much, Danny Lou. Thank you. Back in the lion's den, one can forget about the room being dark or dull, as not one, not two, but three chandeliers light the way towards the room's completion. I love me some lighting. I love me some lighting. I was very nervous about the chandeliers, especially three, but when they went up, it was yes, 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 yes and yes. While the ceiling sparkles, the floor is comfortable underfoot with Bulgatex laminate in a herringbone pattern. Over in Team House and Leisure's master bedroom, someone is literally watching paint dry at the halfway mark. Let's see what Team House and Leisure have planned at the halfway mark of their master bedroom. Oh, and it seems like there's just half a team here. Are you just house or you a leisure? Which one? Leisure. Leisure. Where's house? <laughs> house is on his way here. Right, so you look like the thinker. What are you busy contemplating over there? I'm a bit worried about the paint being done on time because usually at this point we way past the painting phase. So now I have to sit here and make sure it's done. But there really was a layer of paint underneath this. Is that yellow that you extended from the bathroom into your master bedroom. So have you changed your minds on that? We are changing because when the judges came the previous round, they didn't quite vibe with the yellow. So we're thinking of like muting the color a bit. Okay. So we're just going to keep it in the bathroom and this side, a much muted color. Great. So what still needs to be done? I mean, you mentioned worrying about being done on time. What still needs to happen in here? Luckily, this time around, there's not a lot of fixtures. It's just like hanging of our curtain rail. And for the bed, our bed is actually here. It's in the garage. So, and it's not even yet assembled. So we're waiting for this to be done because it needs to be assembled in here. And then we're going with very luxurious bedding this time around. Of course, every master bedroom needs a super luxurious, comfortable bed for a good night's sleep. And what better choice is there than Sealy Posturepedic? When that Sealy <laughs> mattress arrived, it's, it's huge, it's a king size. And how can a person not love a king size? And it's thick. Sure. I mean, like a yeah. double yeah. Mac <laughs> meal. No, it, it was a healthy mattress. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yes. Oh, oh, yes. The bed's arrived. Right. We have a king size in the house. <laughs>
With the progress we've seen at the halfway mark, it's anybody's guess who will come out on top. Will Team Habitat make their dream of winning another challenge come true? Can Team VC balance visual impact and restful serenity to pull together a design that's a master stroke? Or will Team House and Leisure be masters of the bedroom and win a challenge once more? Let us know your thoughts and back your favorite duo using hashtag win a home. Join us again next week Friday at 4 p.m. on Afternoon Express for more from Winner Home as we reveal those master bedrooms. Have a great weekend and good night. My name is Danilo Acquisto. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.